everybody. Welcome to the Dr. Sue and You Show. Have another great episode for you today. And this is an episode, actually, that you have asked for. Celebrity divorces. And I am doing it today with an expert that I have brought in. You know, there's so much hoopla about celebrity divorce. You read about it in the tabloids, on the internet, entertainment tonight. But are those divorce is really different than yours. We're going to find out today that they really aren't that different, but maybe in just one instance when it comes to the money. So joining me today is John Zorzola. He is a family law attorney with Weber Gallagher, and we are going to talk celebrity divorce. Hi, John. Hey, Dr. Sue. How are you doing? Great. I am really excited that you're here today and Thank talking you. about this topic right. that I think a lot of times people that are getting divorced compare themselves to. Well, they should, I mean, because the issues are really no different. I mean, we talk about, and you alluded to that, the amount of money involved. I mean, yes. that's the thing that you see on TV and, you know, some of the things that are in the news about domestic violence, and they, they all have their little wrinkle, um, especially with the money, but the issues when it comes down to mm -hmm. it are the same issues that people with kids that are getting divorced or having family law problems have. It, it, it is true. I know that for myself. I've worked with some celebrities mm. uh, in LA and mm. it's the exact same issues. Yep. It's the custody. It's the arguments that they can't. Right. Um, they're regular people. Go through to get, they are regular yeah. people. I don't think people realize that. But when it does come to the amounts of money, yeah. it is very different. It is. But they're going through the same struggles totally. that all parents and all divorced people are going through. Totally. I learned that myself. Totally. Yeah, I mean, the when you have two people that are together and they have children, and you know they're not getting along right. and there's issues just like everybody else and they decide to get divorced they're going to need to split up with the help of attorneys and with the help of the courts just like you know for lack of a, re a better expression regular folks right. you know regular people have these problems too no different exactly so let's talk about some of these sure. celebrities and the issues that are similar to other people getting divorced. Let's sure. start with one that was in the news. Was it two years ago or one year ago? Matt Lauer. Oh, that one's pretty recent, actually. Yeah, they finalized their divorce a few months ago. The, the real takeaway with the Matt Lauer divorce was um, that's not going to be one of the ones that you saw on TV for, I mean, he had his own issues. Yes. But with respect to their divorce case, it, it is, was rather private. Okay, the big takeaway with Matt Lauer, and this is something that we tell people mm -hmm. a lot of times during first consultations, is that Matt and his wife concluded their divorce agreement months and months before the complaint was filed, before the divorce was actually filed with the court. Mm, I didn't know that either. Yeah, so you got some inside dirt. Yeah, well, that was that was actually <laughs> it, it was actually broadcast. Okay, um, you know, and so a lot of the details of that divorce aren't public, but the takeaway for people considering uh, filing divorce. A lot of people think that, you know what, we're going to get divorced, I better go uh, to the lawyer and tell him to file the complaint right. and get this thing moving. Really, the thing that you want to get moving is the issues involving the property division, custody, child support, alimony, all these things. All of these things do not need a complaint to be filed with the court before you can really hash them out. And it okay. seems like these folks did that. Now let me ask you something about their divorce. You see them up there on the screen. Sure. Oh, there they are. There they are. Uh, there were other issues involved in their divorce. Right. One, of course, was the sexual harassment. Sure. Um, I, I think there was adultery as well. There, right. There had to right. be. And where they live, that would come in to play, I think, out in Los Angeles, where actually he's in New York. I don't know. Right. But there's different laws in different states yes. of how an affair would um, I'm affect trying, the affect, divorce. I could, sure. yeah, affect oh, yeah. the divorce. So, and so, but in the state of Pennsylvania, it's different. It is different. Yeah. Um, and it's, and it's common to all the states or most of the states that have what we call no-fault divorce. Right. Okay, back in the old days, um, you used to have to go to a judge and literally ask for a divorce. You had to prove a case of divorce. Yes. And they had to fit in a lot of these little boxes, like mm -hmm. the person cheated on me or the person is guilty of cruel and barbarous treatment or desertion, you know, all the things. Yes. These were called grounds for divorce, and they still exist today, actually. Right. But because states like New Jersey and Pennsylvania have yes. added no-fault grounds, really it's just 
some procedural hoops you have to jump over. But I must tell you, mm -hmm. um, adultery in Pennsylvania can actually have an effect on the divorce proceedings, mm. not with, with respect to property division, because right. it's no fault. I mean, you guys are getting divorced, you're gonna split up your, your stuff. Okay. But with alimony, um, or with uh, alimony, divorce and adultery come into play. If you can prove that the marriage dissolved because of uh, unfaithfulness, you may actually be able to get more alimony. There right. is a little bit of a punitive nature to adultery in alimony. Okay, so that's good information to know. Totally. Because I think a lot of people are under the understanding that if there is an affair in the states that we're talking about, right. there, you can't do anything today, but I'm glad that you brought that up. Most people are really shocked because, I mean, some of the cases we do get, the the, the unfaithfulness is really the issue that broke up the marriage, as you can imagine. Yes. And people want to be, for lack of a better word, compensated for that. They want to feel justified. You know, they're the innocent party. The other person did this bad thing. And with respect to the stuff they own, yes. it doesn't really come and into I play. And I would guess that Lauer's wife right. wanted to be compensated for that. I can only imagine I can how imagine. much. Oh, yeah. It's I would want to be. I'm I, just telling you the truth. <laughs> that case was in the tens of millions, yeah, just of like a lot of these cases are. I know. Let's yeah. switch to somebody else sure. right now. Let's go to Paul McCartney. There are enough of them. Uh, there are enough celebrity divorces. Okay, we Paul Paul McCartney was married to Heather Mills. Mills sure. Okay, I remember this very well. And I also remember she was very difficult. Very, to say the least. And she almost got nothing, is that correct? I don't know that she almost got nothing, okay. but she made, so this was a case from the UK. Hi, Heather, you see them? Oh, there she is, yeah, that, that's, that's her. And yes. the judge remembers her, which is the, was the big takeaway from this one. Yes. That was a case in the UK. Now, of course, the UK is a common law nation, and we inherit all their concepts and everything like that, so the divorce did not go uh, completely unlike the divorces would go in this country. Right. Her problem, it seems, mm -hmm. is that you know, this was a relatively short-term marriage for a guy who's been famous and rich for yes. a long, long time. I mean, Paul McCartney, it's, you know, 40, 50 years right now. Right. For some reason, she felt she was entitled to about half of his assets. Mm, well, um, a lot of people do, and that's <coughs> not always true. Not at all, not, especially not in this case. Exactly. Yeah, and I'll talk about how that can manifest itself in a regular case. Right. But from what we read on the, uh, the internet and in the newspapers about this divorce, she was representing herself which is big takeaway. Please get some advice before you go in and, and make a fool out of yourself. I in absolutely court. agree. I, I am surprised she represented herself. I get well. In what the was opinion, that about? I, I, the Do only thing I can glean from that mm -hmm. is that when you read the reports, the judge insisted that his opinion would be public over her objection. Okay. So the opinion of, of who got what and what the testimony about, the judge said that she didn't help herself. She was her own worst enemy, yep. and that at times she was not credible, which is another way of saying that somebody's a liar. Exactly. Okay. So she did not herself smart, John. a serious not. Smart. not. So no. the two the two takeaways in that case is you really should have competent legal representation yes. when you're going through this. She got a lot of money, but she didn't get what she wanted. And the second thing is this is something. Do you think she could have if she had an attorney? She may have. She she what what likely would have happened, which is was my third suggestion, mm -hmm. is that if she would have had an attorney. Her attorney would have likely dissuaded her from going in and make these wild claims because exactly. they said she was really unrealistic. And maybe earlier in the proceedings, before she got Sir Paul as angry as he reportedly was, yes. maybe she could have settled for something that was a little bit more favorable and not yeah, been in the I papers. I think that had to do something with her and her ego. But that's yeah. another show, okay? But there's a value to settle your case, okay? okay. It, you might want to go fight. You might want to be justified. You want, might people might want people to know the, how wrong that you were uh, wronged. Mm -hmm. But you know, this is your family. This is your life. This is your you know your psyche. You might want to settle your case. And I agree with that too. I mean, it's always better to settle than go to trial. Yes. And most cases do settle. They do. They do. A Even on the steps on the day of the trial, it's they so do true. a lot of times. Especially with respect to the economic issues, because those are really difficult to try. Um, it's the custody and the support issues that really can take on a life of their own, as we've talked about in the past, and which are yes. common in some of these celebrity divorces. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So what can people really do in certain circumstances when it comes to divorce in order to get their ducks in a row sure. to, um, to approach this process? Sure. 
Because that's, as you just talked about, some of these celebrities didn't even do it right. There's oh, no. people out there too that aren't doing it right. They think they can represent themselves also. No, there is there is some preparation that goes into this. And a lot of times we hope that um, we can get people in early to talk about the things. So when you come to your first meeting with your divorce yeah. attorney, for instance, there's a lot of things and you might not know them, okay? We have cases where the one spouse is absolutely unaware of what they have, how much the other spouse makes, where the stuff is, if money is being hidden. They just don't know these things. Mm -hmm. Sometimes that first meeting, indeed, is to tell them the things that they need to do. Yes. But it really is helpful that when you go see your divorce lawyer for the first time to know a pretty good idea of what assets you have. Mm -hmm. um, how is the house titled? Are there pensions? what uh, names or the cars. How in. can people find these things if they don't know where they are? I mean, I'm sure you're aware that m in many households, one spouse right. or the other manages the finances. Yes. And if they are aware that mm, we're leaning towards divorce, right. they may hide Go them. underground. Go, yeah. You know what I'm saying. What do you do, John? You what know, do you do? Everybody's different. Every household is different. But, you know, you should begin looking at the mail. You should okay. begin taking phone calls. Maybe bills aren't being paid and stuff like that. You should really try to, especially if you're the spouse that never had to deal with that. I mean, some houses, you're quite right, are like that. Paying the bills is my job and doing everything else is your job. You might want to start taking an interest in those things, mm -hmm. even if you have to be a little bit you know, shady about it. A little it. sneaky. Exactly. You have to be. And if in the event that you literally are completely cut off, you have no idea if all the stuff is at the other spouse's work, they pay the bills and everything like that. We have powerful tools in discovery in our cases where we have to find, where we can find those things out. The other person has to give us the information. Yes. Um, and we employ a lot of different tactics like depositions. Okay. We can get private investigators, forensic accountants, right? You know, to other find, financial to people find to this, find these things. To find yeah. these things, because you know what? There could be some money hidden. It happens. It a lot. does happen. All it right, John. We're going to go to our first break, okay. and when we come back, we are going to talk more about celebrity divorce. We're going to talk about Tiger Woods oh and Charlie Sheen. Double time. Double Charlie we'll Sheen. We'll be back in just a minute. <laughs> divorced and need help figuring out your options for refinancing the marital home or purchasing a new home after a divorce? You need a divorce lending professional. There is only one place and one person to turn to for help. Jody Brooms, founder and president of the Divorce Lending Association. Jody is a certified divorce lending professional with over 20 years of experience and has been assisting divorcing couples to identify their goals and has successfully obtained mortgage financing when divorce is present. She understands your needs when it comes to various income sources such as employment, spousal support, and child support, as well as how to work with the liability of paying the various types of marital debt and so much more. If you are divorcing and need a mortgage, there is no one else to turn to except Jody Brooms. She helps clients nationwide. Contact her directly today at 720-692-7241 or by email at jody at jodybrooms.com. NMLS ID 831033. Dr. Sue and you show is just having a great conversation with a family law attorney, John Zorzel, Zor Zola. Can you, you believe it. I almost you're psyching again? yourself out? I know, but doing. I yeah, just yeah. said it right. Anyway, I'm so happy that you're here with me today. Thank you. We are talking about celebrity divorce. Yep. And it's happening. Mm -hmm. It is in the media all the time, yep. and we get sucked into it. Sure, the stories are sometimes uh, they're they're both fantastic, unbelievable, but also people relate to them because it's happening in your house too. Exactly, mm -hmm. and we're not alone. But the fact is, you really are not. No. The celebrity divorces are so similar same to other people's divorces. It's the same issues. And you know what else? They also use mediators. They yes. also go through litigation, and it's the same issues. So yep. let's hit one right off the bat here. All right. Tiger Woods. Oh, Tiger Woods. Do you remember how publicized this was? Yeah, this was a big one because I think, Ugh. you know, there was the, you were watching somebody melt down in front of your eyes yes. too. The divorce was almost a, an effect of the problems that he was having in his own life. But of course, 
the hot button issues were there too, the infidelity. Mm -hmm. um, I think there might have been some substance abuse allegations and the, his career just wasn't going too well. So that right. had all the makings of a real good TV it did. saga. It did, know. it did. But how about their divorce? Their divorce was, uh, she got a lot of money. I mean, I, I, yes. I forget the actual amount. I think it might have been $125 million, Whew. which is what people want to know. The interesting thing about that divorce is, and again, one of the takeaways that I would want people to know that they have the ability to do too, is that there were non-disclosure agreements signed as part of that divorce. So to explain to me mm -hmm. what a non-disclosure is. Those are agreements to where one or both of the parties are agree not to discuss the terms of the divorce, or the terms of anything else that they particularly agree to. The terms of the divorce were not to be discussed, but the interesting thing mm -hmm. is that she is prevented from discussing his affairs uh -huh. in public. Uh. So you can almost think that this is something that might help his career. If she's not on TV or writing books every minute right? about all the women that she was he was with and all this kind of stuff. The interesting thing hmm. about non-disclosure agreements, they are available to regular people. I was just going to ask you this. We can, we can have the ability sometimes to seal dockets in, in celebrity cases, which we've had in our firm. Okay. Um, and also the non-disclosure agreements can also bind the professionals that work on your case if we need to hire accountants, financial people. All those people that we choose to hire uh, are able to sign non-disclosure agreements so that we can keep this information out of the public. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people care about that. Now, if Tiger's ex wanted to argue that she wanted to write the books, mm -hmm. wanted to expose all of this, what would have happened? You can only imagine that in those non-disclosure agreements there are penalties that she would be subject to. Uh, she might have to give money back. She certainly could be sued. Okay. I mean, it, it runs the gamut of whatever you can kind of think of to be the penalty in that agreement. And we do see people that break them. Of course. But did she sign that agreement so she would get more money, in your opinion? You know what? We'll never know that. Okay. The, the details of good that question, are, uh, divorce right, are private. But you know, you know? It, it, maybe it was a good decision by her because, again, this is her family. This is that'll be on TV. Her kids? All their dirty laundry. Her kids? Yeah, exactly. I know. Yeah. You, you'll see that with a lot of celebrities, too. Sure. That they will ask for those non disclosures. Oh, yeah. yeah. Because very important tool. Very important. And it protects their children right. as well. But sometimes. And it makes it go away, maybe. And it, it does, mm -hmm. but sometimes it doesn't protect them all together because some of these exes just go off and do it anyway. Sure. And they probably have to pay a, a penalty. Well, they should. It's a contract. Okay. Mm -hmm. Right. But you're saying non disclosures can be used in a, a typical divorce. In a typical divorce, they can. I mean, you know, you don't have to be a celebrity to be somebody of means. Correct. Or, or somebody that doesn't want their, you could have local politicians. Yep. You could have uh, folks that, you know, uh, are no, uh, have some notoriety in their industry. Mm -hmm. and you know what I mean? And they just don't want their business. That might be the reason they choose to settle their case and not go to court because they just don't want this playing out in exactly. public. Exactly. I agree with that. All right, let's switch to an old one okay. that everybody remembers this, the signing of the napkin. Oh, sure. Steven Spielberg and yeah. Amy Irving. Yes. Steven Spielberg and Amy, <laughs> Amy Irving uh, reportedly met on the, uh, the set of Jaws. Yes. Fell in love, got married, um, and I think they were married for, I think it was six to ten years or something, something like that. Something like that. But Evidently, in the throes of their relationship, they concluded a proper or a prenuptial agreement on a napkin, a cocktail napkin. Yes, and this okay. was all over. Right. <laughs> I know. So um, I'm sure Steven Spielberg felt that he had a contract. Um, it and was that contract written, should be, it was written. Wasn't it written, John? It's written, probably signed. Um, but that prenuptial agreement was found to be invalid. Ah. Um, and this is something that everybody, if you know, if you're contemplating a marriage and you do want to get a prenuptial agreement, it's a very helpful tool. Yeah. It can, it, a prenuptial agreement can actually save you a lot of money in the long run because a lot of the issues can be sorted out People early. are scared to sign prenuptial agreements because they're saying, it's why am I going romantic. into a marriage yeah. already saying it's going to be divorced? divorced. Yeah. So talk about that a minute. So the interesting thing about that, well, right, I mean, this is just, and people are in love, they want to get married. I mean, signing a prenuptial agreement, it's <laughs> like, honey, you know, it, it, there's a show I watch on television where they're covering that right now, and it's just, it's weird. What's it called? I mean, uh, Succession on HBO. It's okay, my, it's I, I my need to watch show. that. Yeah, all right, good. New, all right, uh, great. All right, go ahead. So, you know, so it's definitely not romantic. It mm -hmm. might cause some tension, 
But, you know, if you're entering a marriage for the right reasons and, you know, somebody wants to protect their trust or something right. like that, or even, I mean, we get prenuptial agreements for people that have very little money. Why? Because people are getting married older these days. True. You have a house. Yes. You have a pension that you've worked for for maybe point. 25 years. Yes. There is no reason that you shouldn't be able to ask your partner that, you know, you want to save these kids. You could have adult children that you were always going to leave these things to. Prenuptial agreements really are a must that more people should consider before they walk down the yeah, aisle. Yeah, and not be as scared of it as they are. And if you do it, don't do it on a napkin. Yeah, you know, that's a good point. I was yeah. just going to say that. Don't do it on a napkin. Because there's some things that have to be in there for an agreement to be valid. It has to be written, it has to be signed. But or it also a has to, receipt, anything. Yeah, but it has, <laughs> to have, it has to have a disclosure of your assets. Remember, the person needs to understand what they're signing away. So, so Spielberg thought he had it in his pocket with the napkin and basically he had nada. Yeah. She should have known what I had, but I guess it failed for exactly. that reason. Yeah. All right, let's jump to somebody that has been divorced twice, has mm. so many issues I I know who you that mean. are everywhere all the time. Yeah. Charlie Sheen. Charlie Two Sheen. Two divorces, Denise Richards and Brooke Mueller. Brooke Mueller, yeah, yeah. Well, this one, this is wow. probably the, the classic <laughs> celebrity family law divorce case um, because it was in the, it seemed to be in the news every couple of years. Yes. Um, and he seems to marry these people and can't get along and he winds That's up right. getting divorced. <clears throat> a bunch of big takeaways with that. This one did definitely, as we know, have domestic violence um, issues. Did associated both of with them, it. or it was just with Denise? I don't. No, I, Brooke too. The Brooke Mueller one, yes. I definitely know because there was this incident in Aspen or something That's like that, correct. where this is when it all blew up. I think they may have reunited after that, but again, just like adultery, domestic violence issues being sort of a catalyst for the reason that the relationship mm -hmm. broke up and the reason that you know, the marriage ultimately ended in divorce. The, the thing with him though, and I think with Denise Richards, is yeah. that this is not a young guy, right? No. And he has young children. Yes. Okay, which means he's going to be paying child support probably well into his 60s, okay? Oh, absolutely. I think with Denise Richards, uh, I think one of the kids is about 13 or 14. Yeah, they're, if, they're, they're young, yes. they're teenagers. And I mean, so I mean, and there's a report that he had to sell some of his assets for um, the show he was in, um, was well, it two, two, Two um, half men or yeah, two and a half men. Two and a half yeah. men, yeah. So I think he sold the rights away to that because he had staggering legal right. bills and he gets, continues to fight for custody and support. The custody and support issues, at least in the Denise Richards case, are still in court. I think in oh, okay. September, I didn't yeah, know that. in September she went back and asked for four hundred fifty thousand mm. dollars in back child support, and wow. then had some allegation that he was like moving money around or something like that. So again. These issues are in regular I'll tell people's you something, cases, though. I too. I don't think she had a non-disclosure because she, I'm sure. she's on the Housewives of Beverly Hills, and she talked a lot about her divorce yeah. with Charlie Sheen. Not, not putting him down so much. Actually, she was very open about it, which I appreciated. Well, remember, you, you, you have to sign one willingly, so she probably doesn't have right. one. But I did read that she... Somebody asked her, why are you, you know, you were a big movie star, why are you doing all this reality TV? And she right? said, I have to do this to pay the bills. She said that. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know what? Good for her, because she's working. Sure. In whatever sure. she's doing. That's what, that's what they do. To make yeah. this work. And she's doing some Lifetime movies, too. I saw her on yeah, that, that also. That's, those cases, plural, will be in the news probably for some time. Those children are young. And it's unfortunate. How about I, with Brooke Mueller? Did he have children with her? Did yeah. He, he yeah, did he did. Too. Yeah. Yeah. So, and that, um, I can't remember whether that was in the news recently, but um, the child support, the, so the takeaway from those is like you could be divorced, you could be done, maybe nobody knows about it, but when you have young children and you have a volatile relationship, yes. your custody and your support issues could go on well after the divorce. It's not just about the divorce, it's about keeping this, you know, what the new term blended family sort yep. of going for the years that the children uh, are not emancipated. So that's the cases that I was working with, with celebrities on, okay. were the divorces were done. Sure. And it was more going back to court for the custody now yep. and all the other drama that has been going on since then. Yep, they, those issues might not go away. That's right. Sometimes they can hijack a divorce case too. I mean, the, the parties could come in and they could say, well, we're getting divorced and all this stuff. And literally the divorce issues can be put on the back burner for months or even years while the parties uh, fight about custody and support issues. And it's, it, it can go know, on forever and yep. ever 
and ever. Yep. All right, one more, because I know you love this them. one. And then we're going to wrap up already. Oh, wow. Harrison Ford. Just talk Harrison about that Ford. for a minute. Harrison Ford is a good case. Uh, this was his, his first divorce, I yes. think, in like 1994. Mm -hmm. um, the takeaway for the Harrison Ford case, his wife at the time, was awarded royalties in movies that yes, he had done this. while they were married. So this is actually a really great case that's applicable to really anybody's divorce in terms of figuring out what marital assets are. The stuff you accumulate, if you don't have a prenuptial agreement, during the time you were married is marital. And people don't think it is. They better, okay. because that's the law. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> So the idea that she, um, and the interesting thing about this case too, is that she was awarded something that didn't exist yet, right? So the, right. Ro the future royalties on his, uh, that he will get for things that he did during the marriage. This is especially applicable in cases that we have all the time with financial advisors mm -hmm. who are, you know, build a book of business and they'll conceivably be getting paid on those right. for years and years insurance salesmen, um, mm. and anybody else that's awarded uh, restricted stock units, stock options. These are things, again, that we acquired back then when we were married that may indeed pay in the future for a long time. Identification of these things yep. is paramount in any divorce. Well, you have taught me a lot today as well that I didn't even know Alrighty about family then. law, and I work in this. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's in why a, you gotta go see a lawyer. Exactly, in a different way. But I think the takeaway from this is that definitely meet with a lawyer. Sure. Don't do this alone because you don't understand all of the other aspects of divorce. That's correct. Nobody does except experts and family lawyers. The stuff we deal with every, every day. Every single mm -hmm. day. All right, John, thank you so much you for being it. on Anytime. the show. So such a, a great show today. And we learned that people's divorces are very similar to the celebrities. They, people they're are people. People, people are people. Mm -hmm. They have the same issues. Yep. All right, can you tell everybody how they can get in touch with you? Sure, my name is John Zerzola. I'm a partner in the family law area of Weber Gallagher, and we can be reached at 610-272-5555. Thanks, John. Not a problem. Hey, everybody, another great episode of Dr. Sue and You. I want to thank John Zerzola of Weber Gallagher for being on the show with me today. Divorce is tough. Mm -hmm. You need somebody that's going to go to bat for you. I think this guy is one of them. <laughs> and you're no different than celebrities out there struggling every single day. And John is right. The main difference is just the money. I know it too because I've worked with some of them. But keep moving forward. Get good advice from a really good family law attorney. And your journey through this will not be as difficult. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you back here next week for another episode of Dr. Sue and You. Until then, stay positive and move forward one step at a time. Bye-bye.